couple more camera mount items and a look at my Harbor Freight battery charger. So that's uh, pretty much uh, it for that one. Uh, like I say, that's going to work out really good. And uh, that's going to do this. So let me turn this down or turn this off and I'll bring you back when I have more. Alright, there you can see. I have the uh, bottom piece on here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I do have it on. But anyway, there's the top piece. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Obviously, still a little bit shaky, but like I said, once it's it's ready to go, it's all, it's okay. Now let me take this down a little bit, and we will look at this. This has got the uh, longer one on it. Now, I could probably just reverse that, and that would work all right. For I wouldn't even have to use this uh, jack or uh, not jack, but uh, tripod mount if I didn't want to. Uh, this will come in handy though if I want to use a Sony because it it lets you mount the uh, camera on the side as you can see there like that so that would be handy for that definitely so uh, I could say I'll keep this around for over here in case I do need it but for right now that should work pretty good let me turn it around just to see if it will work the other way It'll take but a minute okay there you go there you can see it is perfect for that now I don't even need to add the uh, tripod mount and it works either way so that's kind of neat I like that I like that a lot and uh, that will work very nicely for any situation on that and uh, again haven't done anything over there on the uh, frequency counter but I will I do plan on uh, checking that out seeing if I can get that uh, set up for it as well so that will be next time though for right now I think we're going to end this here. Ah, good evening YouTube, or good afternoon. No, it's evening. It's right six after six, so 618. It is evening. Yay, yay, yay. On this Monday, still. Um, before you, you see a Harbor Freight battery charger. This, uh, this actually may look new, but it's not. I've had this thing for, well, as long as I've had my Buick. Uh, so it's getting close to be 10 years now. And by the look of it, it hasn't been used much. Well, it's it really hasn't been used much. Because I never really think it's working. Um, <laughs> I just, it just doesn't seem to do anything when you hook it up. The meter doesn't move, the, you know, nothing really happens. Now, I, I will admit, when you put it on starter boost, which is over here, and you put it on engine starter, here it will boost the uh, power going to the battery and help you start your car I, I've seen that happen so that part probably works but the rest of this I have really I've used it to charge batteries and really doesn't seem to do anything this charge complete uh, reverse connection I've never seen that let light come on that I know of either one as a matter of fact of course I don't usually hook them up backwards but you know so what I'm going to do is uh, <clears throat> take this thing apart um, simply because I can. Had to kick my camera again; it just wasn't cooperating. Um, take these screws off the side. I believe is the ones that two on the side. Each side I think will make it come apart enough to where we can get into it and see it. All right, that's four screws off. So let's just pop it around this way and take a look. Well. So far, so good. I'll turn it up here so you guys can see. It doesn't look like anything is amiss uh, just by a glance, cursory glance. Uh, it does have quite a few components in here and a nice large transformer, which uh, is a good thing. It has one wire, or one, uh, not wire clamp. Ah, here I see something right away. Let's see if we can get a little closer for you. Um, this is not uh, 
doesn't supposed to be there. I'm, I'm sure of that. I don't know what that is, but it's not supposed to be there, I'm sure. Looks kind of like maybe some insulation or something off of a wire or something like that. Um, like whatever it is, I'm sure it's not supposed to be there. Uh, maybe that wire might look a little dark there. I don't know if that's dark or if that's just the way the, uh, what do you call it, is laid out or what. But uh, I'm not going to condemn it just because of that. Um, up here it looks like there's uh, one, one terminal missing. I don't know that could be. Uh, it may be that that's the way it's... I tried to find a schematic for this online, but didn't have any luck on that. So, uh, let's see what we got down here in front. Looks like some kind of a uh, semiconductor, maybe, device there. Uh, I don't know what that is. Definitely a semiconductor over here. This is the power input here. Here's the cord. I was thinking the other one was the power input. That's the output. Okay, making more sense now. It's a three-prong cord. One wire, the green wire, goes to the uh, chassis. That's correct. The white wire goes to here, where it goes in two different places to the switch. No doubt to switch uh, from one to the other. Let's put it in just a normal charging mode. Um, let's see, we have fast charge, 12 volts. That would be about as normal as you can get. I'm going to put it right there. And uh, so let's see where it goes from there. These are all together, so these two here would be common. The yellow one would be common because it's connected to the same spot. So let's see where our our switch switches between. So this is one side of the primary, obviously. It almost has to be no way about it, no way uh, around it. So I'm going to take this off, maybe. Try to. There we go. Now that's one side of the primary, so let's just check and see what we get uh, for readings here amongst some of these things here. Oh, we ain't getting much there at all. Nothing. Yeah, that's another possibility. The uh, primary could be burning out on this thing. Yep, nothing there. So let's go to the red one instead. Alright, what are we getting at the red one? Aha! Uh -huh. 1.7, 1.8. So there is, a, is some kind of a winding there for sure. Uh, I'm going to guess all these probably will have some kind of winding with the uh, other one. I don't know what, but let's see if we can pull this orange one out and the blue one. There we go. Now we can get to these. So that, I started to say it's coming in at something, but it's, it, it just went away. Looks like, uh, not darn it, 4.3. 4.3 there. Two point I just won't settle down. Three point oh. 3.0 there. So, it's 2.0 there. Point 2.5 there. So, those are all windings of the uh, of the uh, prim primary. Apparently, the uh, output is switched when you switch those switches around and uh, so that means that uh, depending on where that switch is is uh, set is what you what kind of winding you get on the uh, power transformer. All right, on the Kodak now, just to finish this up. So, like I said, what we've learned is the primary side 
uh, puts in different uh, amounts of voltage and uh, judging, let's, let's try some other measurements to make sure what the voltage output is on different things. Uh, it's still hooked up. So let's go there. Now we're back to 29 volts. Let's take it over to uh, float charge, see what it does there. Oh, it drops down to 24 volts. Okay, but take it down to six volts, see what happens. It drops down to 18.6 interesting that is very interesting let's take it up to okay up to fast or the uh, charge engine start what do you want to call it 33 and a third so like I say it uh, uh, regular fast charge on the 12 volt puts out 29 volts out of the transformer itself so at least we have, we know that the transformer is good. What we don't know is, is all these electronics any good? That would be our next uh, thing to look at, I think. Uh, almost has to be a problem with some of this stuff because of, uh, you know, if it wasn't, the battery would show. Like I said, you, you saw the output come out when I put it on start and or maybe you did, my camera was messing up so bad you might not have seen it, but the when I turned over to start this position right here, it shows 12 volts, 12.6 or something like that coming out, or maybe four, no, 14 something coming out of, uh, of the, uh, with this on engine start. So it, it definitely comes out the uh, cables then, but if you just put it on fast charge, nothing comes out, no voltage at all. So, that's my, uh, that's where I'm at. Okay, <clears throat> thanks to Bob. You all know Bob. Uh, we now have a schematic for the battery charger. This is, if you look down here, you'll see the exact item number, that uh, 66783, that is exactly what I have. And this is exactly the circuit for it. Now this one does not show the primary section of the uh, transformer just the secondary. You can see there it is center tapped and there's the output stuff like that. The uh, outputs are, are half wave rectified uh, or actually full wave rectified, I'm sorry. There's two lines there and they come up here to this area here where there is an SCR. Now that's that big heat sink item I thought was a voltage regulator is actually an SCR and I think that might be my problem because as you recall from me just talking on the uh, video, uh, if I put this start switch down, I can get output here on my battery. Uh, this is a sensing circuit. In other words, there needs to be a battery hooked up between here and there for the SCR to be uh, triggered and output to come out. But once you turn this switch, you get the output no matter what. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is do some testing with an actual battery in the car or something like that and leave that switch uh, set and see if it, if it actually uh, neater, you know, moves and things like that because I tell you the truth, I don't really, really call, recall ever seeing this meter move. So, you know, this SCR could have been bad from the factory. You never can tell. I did find this SCR. I've got the number listed and uh, uh, it wasn't quite the one I said. I think I said 86055K. It's actually S6055K, and it is the exact same uh, SCR, so that is a good thing. Uh, I'm going to fix it, obviously, if that's the problem, but, uh, I, you know, same time, I, I kind of like to know about if there, any of the rest of the stuff is bad, or, you know, so that's what I said. If I, if I flip that switch there, I think I can just get the same as if the SCR had been switched on. That's the only difference, because it's a switch across there. And uh, that's the uh, switch for the SCR, is this right up here. Once it's on, this is just a, a solid line here, just like this would be. So, you know, that's the only thing the SCR does. Now, uh, it does stay latched, I believe, no matter what. So, I believe I probably could test it with just hooking up a 9-volt battery across here and see if uh, then I, if I get uh, uh, 12 volts or whatever out of this. 
because uh, then I can remove the battery. I'm not going to have to blow up the battery doing that, but uh, it should, once it latches, I don't think it should unlatch. Uh, I believe a triac will, but uh, I don't think SCR is unlatched like that. So uh, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, so let's go back and finish the uh, other part of the uh, uh, the video. Or maybe it's just the uh, resistance that it's measuring is, is connected to. I don't know. The internal resistance of the battery, maybe that's enough to, to do this, click this over. I don't know. But uh, like I say, uh, we, we know more than we did, which is good. And uh, I'm happy about that because uh, I just kind of wondered about this thing. It just doesn't do much. Doesn't seem to anyway. So we at least we know the transformer is good, and that uh, we don't know what this is and if it's any good or not. I believe this is good. Whatever this thing is, because it seems to work right because. It shows the dead short between these two, but it does have output there, so. I don't know. Interesting, nonetheless. Wonder how what it takes to get that board off there. Well, it looks like there's a screw right here in the middle. I don't know that it would come off. If you take this off, let's see, that would take that part off. I might be able to get this off. Let me uh, work on that a little bit, and I'll bring you back. All right, what we got here is the brains of the... Uh, outfit. I call it the brains because it's the only intelligent part about the battery charger other than the switches and whatever this is, uh, some kind of uh, overheating protection I would think. Uh, same with these, like a circuit breaker or whatever. Same with this, I'm not sure. But those all work because we did prove the fact that it does get voltage out the transformer. So that just leaves this. Now this is where the charger, the uh, cables, output cables, whatever you want to call them, get their uh, sense from or their purpose for, or I don't know what you would call it, but uh, I need to look up some numbers, see if these are uh, voltage regulators, which that probably is. Just a guess. But uh, uh, transistors or transistors, I know what they, those are. And like I said, there is one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Probably all the same, if I had to guess. They're marked uh, in two, in, th in three, in two, P4. Obviously, those must be PNPs and, and NPNs, I'm guessing. May be wrong because there's an R and an NI <laughs> as well. Another P there. Uh, red tab. That's already. It's marked. Okay. That's that's good. That says brown tab, but it's actually black. So not going to worry about that too much. Uh, there's our switch for switch between uh, battery and or charging and starting and. Uh, Looks to me like these two are common. So if it, the only time it, it's it's basically an on-off switch, it's on off there and on here. So these two are energized with it on. So let's let's double check all that, Jesus, Pete. I guess might as well. So I should have connection between here and here now. Point two, I do. Shouldn't have anything now. And I don't. So those are good. So that does work. Hmm, hmm. If I knew what that was, I could test it. Well, I, t I say I could test it. There voltage regulators, you really can't test with an ohmmeter or anything. Let me look at it with the magnification lamp, see if there's any closer look at it or anything I'm missing. I'm going to say 860 60, or 55K. So there's your numbers 86055K and GD123. Uh, I could probably look that thing up too, but I'm pretty sure that's a 
either a circuit breaker or a fuse, something like that, you know. So, let me, uh, let me work on that. Let me, um, look those numbers up if I can. We'll call this part one or whatever. And, uh, maybe come back, uh, tomorrow and look at it again if I can figure out some more about it. There's our list. Two N5551s, two N5401, two N4403, and this one has a CJ on top and a TL431. So, and then there's our chip number. So let me look those up and see what I come up with. And like I say, I may, you may, I may come back on this again tomorrow and see. I kind of like to know because uh, this is a, supposed to be a fairly decent uh, battery charger if it works. And if it doesn't, I'd like to know why. So we'll go from there. Talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya.